Hello friends, Merry Christmas. I'm so honored to be here with you today and share part of your special day. I hope you are also enjoying a few of your traditions just like we are here at Casa Alexander. In fact, I wanted to share with you one of our favorite traditions, which is Ross's Christmas Morning Cinnamon Rolls. I know that's a very long title, but each one of those five words has something significant and special and sentimental to us, so I couldn't bear leaving even one of those words out. So let me tell you about what my husband has been doing for almost 40 years. He gets up on Christmas morning and makes cinnamon rolls, not just for our family to enjoy after we open presents, but also he picks out a couple of families that have been significant to us throughout the years, and he delivers these fresh out of the oven cinnamon rolls to them while they are usually still in their pajamas, but they don't mind when they open the door and enjoy this platter of yummy goodness that everybody engulfs immediately. In fact, these rolls are a little bit small, but they are extra large in love. So let me tell you what he does. And this is a very simple recipe, but it is sure to please everyone in your family. You know what a, a roll of crescent rolls looks like. It's just a roll that is in the biscuit aisle in the grocery market. But he rolls these out into rectangles and then he takes, um, he sets those out and has those ready, but he uses a five by seven pan, lines it with parchment paper and we've melted one tablespoon of butter in the pan. And he adds to that two teaspoons of water, as well as a fourth of a cup of brown sugar. And then he stirs that around to make a little bit of a sauce in the bottom of the pan. So there's a little bit of a glaze there in the bottom of the pan by the time he will be putting his cinnamon rolls on top of that. That usually stirs together quite nicely. If you think you need a little bit more water or butter, there's no rules to this. In fact, he usually eyeballs it all. I actually was the one who had to pin him down on exactly what his in measurements were because he never measures. He always just throws things in the pan, but this is pretty close to what he does. And when you're done, you're gonna have a little bit of a sauce there in the bottom of your pan, if you can see that. Next, once he has laid out his rectangles of crescent rolls, he uses another tablespoon of butter to brush the tops of each one of these. Make sure there's just a thin coating on there like so, that's pretty easy to do. If you don't have a brush, you could use a little spoon to uh, dip it out and then spread it around. It's really very easy to do. The next thing that we are gonna do is he takes a couple of tablespoons of sugar along with a probably a heaping teaspoon of cinnamon. You can, do whatever you want as far as um, your mixture. If you like more cinnamon or less, completely up to you. But then he just takes a spoon and sprinkles that on each one of the rectangles, making sure that you cover it nicely, very easily. This is something you could maybe even involve your kids in. And he sometimes makes these this part up the night before and uh, has used some of the kids' help to do that. So that's just, all, that's all there is to the cinnamon roll part. The next part is he rolls these up very tightly into a roll, each one of these. And like I said, this is considered like one batch and it fits perfectly in our little five by seven pan. If you want to make a double batch, it could easily go in probably a nine by nine. He has tried it in the nine by 13 pans, but the problem with that is they start getting a little bit gooey in the center and more done on the outside perimeter. So I think the smaller batches are the key to better baking, but what he does before he puts it in the pan is he slices this into four equal sections, and then we are gonna put them in our pan. Now, the key to this, I have found, is not overcrowding these. I think they cook up a lot nicer 
if you give them a little bit of space if you can. And once we're done putting this, these in here, we are just gonna bake them at 350 for about 25 minutes, but watch them those last five minutes or so because they start browning quickly and uh, some ovens vary in temperature settings. So just keep a close eye on that. And then after you are done cooking them, I think it's best to let them set for about 15 minutes before you flip them over. Here, I'll show you. Once you're done rolling them out, they look like that. So again, 350 for about 25 minutes. Keep an eye on them. Let them set for 15 minutes. And then after that, you flip them upside down and that beautiful glaze then is on the top. It's a perfect one bite or two bite size of cinnamon roll. They're 80 calories a piece. I think two, three, four are about the perfect amount. But if you want to start a tradition for your family or giving them to someone special, I think they would enjoy that too. Before I go, I want to tell you about one more quick tradition for a week later on New Year's Day. This has been in my mother's family for over a hundred years and she always makes ham and beans. It will be up on my blog as well, Grandma Mary's Ham and Beans. Simply take a pound of northern beans, soak them overnight, make sure there's enough water to cover them, drain the water the next morning, add the beans back to the pot, add more water to cover the beans along with a chopped up onion, a stick of butter, yes, a whole stick of butter, and a ham hock. If you don't know what that is, I didn't either. I had to go to the butcher and talk to them about it. They will tell you what a ham hock is. Put that in there and some salt and pepper and you just simmer it for two to three hours till the beans are softened. And then you remove the ham hock, pick off the ham, put the meat back in your pot. If you don't wanna do the ham hock, you can buy a slab of ham and add whatever you want to it. But that is just some of our fun traditions and I will put a link to Grandma Mary's ham and beans on the recipe on my blog, Food Fitness by Page, I will put a link to that in my post, Ross's Christmas Morning Cinnamon Rolls. So everything will be there for you to share. And I'll probably add my French silk pie and my Cool Rise white bread that I do every Christmas as well. I hope you have a wonderful, safe, joyous holiday season. And if you have some traditions, I would love for you to share those with me. It warms my heart to see what other people do as well in their kitchens. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.